All right, guys, so let's go over the detail panel. Now, in the detail panel, we're going to be making sharpening as well as noise reduction enhancements to our images. And I think the best image to probably show this is going to be this one with a boy in it. Since it's a nice portrait, we can see kind of detail in his uh, eyes and in his face and stuff like that. So now the first thing I want to go over is basically this little preview panel that you see right here, this little zoom panel. You can change this preview panel, what you're showing in the preview panel, by clicking and dragging to a different portion of the image. Or if it's kind of difficult to find what you're looking for, just click this point right here, the adjust detail zoom area, and just move it over what area you want to zoom in on, and then click right there. And then you can have kind of like this, this view of a facial detail or whatever you need to be able to make adjustments uh, to the sharpening and stuff from there. Now, we're going to actually minimize this because we're going to zoom in the overall picture. I want to use this large picture as the example so we can kind of really zoom in and see all the detail for the tutorial. But normally if I'm going through quickly, I'll just use that preview view right there. All right, so let's start going over the different sharpening sliders. Now the amount comes defaulted at 25, and this is basically the overall strength of the sharpening effect. So you can bring it all the way down to zero and all the way up to 150. Any more than 150, you need to take it into Photoshop to do that kind of sharpening or add additional adjustment uh, brushes and, and grad graduated filter effects to increase that amount of sharpening. But you probably don't need to for the most part. So 150 is the highest amount. We're going to set it to 150 just so you can see what we're doing uh, very easily. Now the next slider that we have is the radius, and basically the radius is dealing with how many pixels out from each point do you want to sharpen. Basically the lower this is, the more fine the detail is going to be that's sharpened, and the higher this is, the larger the, the radius is going to extend out, increasing the size and kind of that halo effect of the, sharpen, the sharpening effect. So if I take this all the way up to 3, which is the max, you'll see that we kind of create these little halos, uh, this little halo effect around these edges. Now if I take this back down to zero, you're going to see that our, our sharpening now are very, very fine little points. And if I zoom in three to one, you can see basically these little sharpening points are really fine. And as the radius increases, those sharpening points get larger and larger by each pixel. So you can see more and more of a halo effect around these edges. Now the detail and the masking, I'm going to go back to one to one so we can see a little bit zoomed out a little bit. Now the detail and the masking are basically dampening effects, so these kind of reduce the overall sharpening level. Detail essentially works by reducing the overall halo effect. So at 100, this is kind of counterintuitive, but at 100, this is no reduction of the halo effect, and then taking it back to zero is zero halo effect. So think of 100 as uh, tons of halo, and think of zero as no halo. And you can kind of see how this works. If I hold Alt and I click and drag, it'll show me the mask. So right now, you can see how the sharpening area of the image is kind of very much dampened. And if I pull it up to the right, you can see how that sharpening effects get much, much more powerful. And you see a lot more of that halo effect. So it comes defaulted at 25, which is typically a, a good amount. Again, we typically aren't going to be doing this much sharpening. So you're not going to, you won't be seeing that much of a halo effect. Masking is another dampening tool which basically is going to mask out the overall sharpening effect. Um, again, this works the opposite way. At zero, there is zero masking, so you see the complete sharpening effect. And if you take it up to 100, it's masking out a lot of the sharpening effect. And you, you can see this work again if I hold Alt and I click. You can see at zero, the mask is completely white, meaning that it's revealing all of the sharpening effect. As I drag up, you're going to see and let me zoom out on actually on this so it's a little bit easier to view. So here's zero, and if I zoom up, you're going to see more and more of the image becomes black, meaning that we're revealing less and less of the sharpening layer. So as I take it up to 100, the white areas are the, are the only areas now that are being shown, uh, that are being sharpened in this at, when it's at 100. So if I zoom back into the image, you can see that even though my amount, my radius is set to the maximum amount, the overall sharpening effect really isn't that high. So we're going to basically use detail and masking to kind of dampen the effect um, and then the amount and radius to kind of control the overall, overall strength of that sharpening. All right, so let's move on to noise reduction. Now I want to switch images again to a different image that actually has quite a bit of noise so we can see this effect. It's this very last image, this number 22. This image was taken at night and it was shot at 5000 ISO, so there's quite a bit of noise in the image. All right, so what I'm going to do now is zoom into this shadowy area of the image so we can actually see the noise up close. Um, I'm going to actually zoom to 3 to 1 so we can really get in there. Up close and personal. That's what we got to do. All right, now I'm going to take my color noise slider. This comes defaulted to 25. I want to reduce it all the way to 0. Now there's a few different types of 
color uh, of noise. Basically, one, you have luminance noise, which is uh, dealing with the brightness levels and dealing with just overall grain. And the other one is color noise, which is created from when you're shooting at really high ISOs. Basically, you're getting these little color aberrations, these little flecks and colors that don't belong in the image that are created just by the sensor being at such a high ISO setting. So Lightroom comes built in with a really powerful noise reduction system that's actually only rivaled by a few pieces of professional noise reduction software. So it's extremely powerful and it's, and it's built to deal with both luminance and color noise. So what we see here in the slider is the first option I have is the luminance slider, which if I drag up, it's going to reduce the amount of luminance noise all the way up to 100. And basically the trade-off here is that we're reducing detail in the image. I'm actually going to reduce detail to zero so we can have these sliders set to zero and we can show you guys how it looks. The other noise slider that I have is the color noise. So what we're left with now is basically color noise, which is this weird kind of blues, because we're looking at these trees here, which have greens in them. But we see kind of these weird blues and stuff, which don't belong uh, in that area. That's the color noise that we're seeing. And there's also kind of some random yellowish uh, tones, too. So I'm going to increase the color slider to reduce that color noise. And we'll go all the way up to plus 100 as well. All right, so now if I browse through the image, if I just look anywhere, it's completely smooth. There is absolutely no noise anywhere in this image. It's very, very powerful. But we've done it at a cost of reducing our details. So if I zoom in on their faces, and let's do it at maybe, well, actually 3 to 1 is fine. So if I zoom in their faces, I see that all the original detail in the shot is actually gone. If I pull down the, the noise reduction, we can see the detail that was originally there. So that's what the detail that was there. We pull it all the way up. We're reducing that detail. Now basically on both luminance and on color uh, noise, you have both this detail option of preserving the detail that was there in the image. This is kind of, again, another dampening effect of being able to pull back some of that detail that was originally there, but it's going to come at a cost of creating like these little artifacts. So as I pull detail higher up, I, I do get more detail and I see more and more of, of the skin, uh, of like eyelashes and stuff like that, more of the fine detail in the hair. But you'll also notice that there starts to appear some of these little artifact objects in here, which are kind of like these little noise artifacts. So it creates kind of this strange little artifacting effect over certain areas of the image, which you probably need to Photoshop out. And you can kind of see it all around here. Now contrast is another one of these kind of dampening effects that is, again is going to increase the amount of, of detail back in our image. So as I increase contrast, we're going to see more detail back like in his, you know, he has a little five o'clock shadow right here. As I increase the contrast, you're going to be able to see that appear more and more. So you want to play around with these sliders to kind of get the right amount of detail in your image. Uh, same thing with the color detail. As we increase this, we're going to see a little bit more detail in the areas over the skin. Again, you're going to see a little bit of artifacting as you go up higher and higher. So you want to kind of strike a right balance. You definitely don't want to overpower the noise reduction on your images because you're basically unnecessarily killing the detail. So on an image like this, I'm going to reset all of this noise reduction by hitting Alt and clicking on Reset. I'll probably increase my noise reduction up to maybe about 60. I'm going to reduce the detail to maybe like 35 or 30. Uh, bring the color noise reduction up a little bit. And I'm going to leave it right there because I do want some level of grain in there because it's going to preserve some of that detail, but I want all that kind of nasty noise out of the, the shadowy areas. And I'd probably also add a little bit of sharpening to this. And keep in mind that it's a very fine balance between sharpening and noise reduction because as you're sharpening, you're also adding noise. So you're going to have to kind of balance between the two. And so I think that's a good effect. It's a good balance between uh, preserving the detail in my image as well as kind of getting rid of a lot of that kind of nasty noise. All right, guys, so let's move on to the lens correction panel.